So I want to talk about some tips that not many people talk about. And the reason I want to talk about these is because I feel like there's a misconception on how to actually play better at this game. And I feel like a lot of people are just trying to copy the same exact play style, but it just doesn't work out for them. So we're going to kind of go into some settings, then some actual general tips and stuff like that to kind of show you guys what you need to be doing in order to be playing better, in order to just have maximize your potential and stuff, basically. So let's get straight into that, guys. Can we drop a like on this? I think we could. Let's get straight into the first thing. So I want to go straight here. We're going to go into the settings right away, and I'm going to show you guys something that I think is kind of important that a lot of people kind of just skip over, and then we're going to go into a game. I'm going to show you guys some things that you need to know as well. So the first thing I actually want to go into is con the controller settings. We don't need to go to many other settings or anything like that, but basically this is it. There's a few things I'm going to talk about here, and they're actually pretty important. Now, I play on flipped, so I don't shoot with my bottom triggers. I actually aim and shoot with my top triggers, and the reason for that is because they actually, the second you touch it, the second you push in, it registers in game right away. Really fast really easy and it's just it's a lot com more comfortable on a playstation controller if you're playing on an xbox controller it's not as comfortable i would admit but playing with uh, playing with flipped l1 r1 in my opinion it's just better micro milliseconds fa not micro it's milliseconds faster but it makes a huge difference in game and then as you guys can see here i mean i, I pretty much just jump with r3 and i melee with x so i just switched those that's all i literally did i put it to stick and move flipped and that's basically it. So that, that's me. That's what I like it. A lot of people don't like stick and move. I understand that people like bumper jumper. People like different things. I understand that. You got to kind of find the one that fits for you. For me, it's jump shotting. And the reason I like to jump shot a lot is because I use the assault gloves. And every time you jump shot using the assault gloves, you actually are a lot more accurate. So I do like that. Now, let's go into aiming here. So this sensitivity, a lot of people think that this is super important. It's not. I'm going to share a little secret with you guys. It's not important at all, actually. This just mi literally means how fast you're going to turn in game while in hip fire, if you want to think of it that way. Once you actually ADS and you change your custom sensitivity per zoom, which we're going to go do that right here, this changes everything, all right? So I'm going to I'm gonna go into this and kind of explain it to you guys, but I want to go into a game to explain this one to you guys because I feel like it would just make a lot more sense if I did it. Now, I'm going to tell you guys that the higher I, my zoom goes, the lower my sensitivity goes. And the reason you want to do this is because once you actually ADS, you want to be as accurate as possible. Let aim assist kind of do all the work. So if you lower this, rather than leaving it all at one or something, once you lower it, the aim assist is a lot stronger, I find. It just it is a lot easier. And let's go into game. I'm going to kind of explain this once you guys will go into a private match quickly, just so you guys can kind of visually see what I'm talking about, rather than me just showing you the settings. I don't know my buddies were in here. I hope they don't kill. <laughs> I got everyone muted, so I can't really tell them not to kill, but I just hope they don't. So as you guys can see, I'm moving right now. My sensitivity is pretty high. It's at 12 and 13 on the hip, so you guys can see it's really fast. But once I actually start ADSing, it does get a lot slower because we put it slower and stuff, and we just want it to be a lot stickier. So I'm gonna see if I can find one of my buddies running around here. Hopefully we could, and I'll kind of show you guys why I mean the ADS is gonna do all the work. I don't even know if they spawned in yet. One of them did. Don't kill. Don't, no, you're not supposed to kill. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna try and kind of say hidden here. So as you guys can see, like I said, it's it's pretty slow, but it's still kind of fast. If you want to make this any slower for yourself, again, just go back into the aiming here. Go to the custom sensitivity per zoom, and you guys are gonna see that we're gonna actually switch this to a lot slower now. And just just for the sake of it, just for the sake of this video, and you guys are gonna see it's a lot slower as well. So this is actually not bad. Now the reason I wouldn't recommend 40 or something is because of see right there. I'm not even touching the stick. ADS or I should say. ADS Aim assist is pretty much doing all the work. I'm not doing anything at all, and we're gonna see what it does here. So I'm gonna try and snap onto him. So right now it's really fast, and then we can just go like that, and there you go. Aim assist is gonna do all the work. It's gonna kind of try and stay on and stuff. It's just pretty good. So that's really low. Now, if we actually go ahead and put this higher, I don't mean to go to graphics, let's just go here. And we actually put it a little higher. The aim assist isn't going to be as sticky, but what it is gonna do, it's still gonna be pretty nice. So we're gonna put that to, I believe, 85, 90 is pretty good. So anywhere around there, and as you can see right here, this is me moving around like crazy. And then once we ADS, it kind of just sticks on and stuff. And then if you want to move off, it kind of just sticks again. So that's why I put it down to 90. I find if it's at one, it'll have a little more trouble trying to stick on to the person rather than, oh, here we go. Here we go. Just for that, I'm finishing him. Hold up. Rather than just not sticking at all, it just, it, it does stick, which is not great, you know? So first off, we're going to go, we're going to find him. We're going to do this because screw him. Get out. Oh no, you didn't. All right. I'm ending it. I'm ending it for <laughs> God damn. 
So I think that's enough talking about sensitivity, but I want to go into another thing right here just to show you guys another thing that we could do, and that's in gameplay. So what I like to set is my automatic tactical sprint. I like to actually turn this on, not automatic sprint, not off. I actually turn it to automatic tactical sprint. And the reason I do this and also turn on slide maintain sprint is because every time I slide, I want to get back into that sprint as fast as possible. And it actually works out really great. This is like really good. If you like movement, if you like getting around the map very, very quickly, these two are super super important. Not many people are going to tell you to turn these on. I recommend turning these on. It's actually really, really important. Now there's another setting as well. I kind of forget where this one is, but it's also another important one. But again, I, I kind of have trouble finding it. I'm going to probably get back to you guys when I do find it. There it is. Wasn't that far dead zone inputs. So this one right here, okay, dead zone input, again, is something that's pretty important. Now, what I do for my left stick is I set it to zero. Now you might think, why? Why set it to zero and the max to 60? What's the point of actually doing that? So this is actually really important. Your left stick is what helps with rotational aim assist. All right. So rotational aim assist is pretty much once you actually just sh strafe kind of left and right in game, just move around side to side, let aim assist do all the work. When you have this set to zero, you don't even have to touch it for it to do the work, okay? The rotational aim assist is just gonna act right away, it's gonna go really fast, and it's stronger than actual aim assist with the right stick. You don't wanna use the right stick for aim assist at all times, right? It's gonna help you stay on target and stuff, but if you're going left to right and letting rotational aim assist do its job, it is very sticky, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Now, I always recommend using rotational aim assist along with actual aim assist, because it's just a lot better, but I put the max to 60, because if I, if I am moving this too much, I don't want it to actually go all the way up to 100. I want it just to move like just halfway up my controller, halfway up moving it, it does the job, right? Now I put my right to five and I put my right max to 100. And this again, this is all pretty much preference. I just think it's good. If you have stick drift on your right stick, which a lot of people do, it, it's gonna go up like a, a lot higher. You're gonna wanna put this to maybe 15, maybe 11. I don't know, wherever your stick drift gets into, it comes in, just set it to that. So test it out, put it to nine, see if you have stick drift. If not, leave it at nine. But if I like it at five. I have zero stick drift whatsoever. And I don't know if there's any correlation to this, but I play with my controller vibration off. And ever since doing that, I've had this controller for years, years and years and years, and I've never had stick drift on it. It's a basic PlayStation controller, nothing too fancy with it. I've had it for years and I've never had controller vibration. When I used to have controller vibration on, my controllers would get stick drift within a few months. So I don't know if there's any correlation, maybe I'm just lucky with this controller, but again, I have no stick drift whatsoever with it. I'm gonna put that back up to 60 before I forget. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna leave it at that. Let's go back into some gameplay tips right now because we're, we're kind of done with the settings. We don't need to talk about these too much. So here's a tip you're not gonna hear, at least not too often. If you watch my other tip videos, you might hear me talking about it, but not too many people actually talk about this. So basically, this is gonna be something you have heard, is that you wanna keep these crosshairs right here. With that little dot, you wanna keep it centered. So here's my buddy right here. If you're running out of a certain area, let's say you're coming out of this building right here, you wanna have it centered to where you think an enemy's gonna be. So he's right here right now, we can just ignore him. Let's say he was behind this van, standing right back there. Once you come out, you don't wanna come out of this end point here, because if someone's there, you're kind of messed up, right? But we know that a lot of people camp in this little area. So what you will do is before you even turn out of here, you'll already be aimed right there. Now let's say there's somebody at this doorway, okay? And you know that. When you come here, you wanna be pointed at that doorway. Cool, everybody knows that, right? But what a lot of people don't realize is that when they turn a corner, they'll just run out and they won't actually survey the area. They're just gonna run out and kind of hope to see someone. That's not what you wanna do. What you wanna do is, let's say I'm coming out this door, instead of just rushing out here like a headless chicken, what you wanna do is kind of look at the right side here and as you're turning out the door, keep that crosshair turning with you, okay? Kind of keep it going with you. So this way, the second you do actually see someone, let's say there's someone head right here, if you're here, he won't see you. But once you're actually turning, right there you'll see each other and you can just ads and shoot at him right so that's pretty good actually that's kind of good timing so let's say he's right there for example okay we're not going to just come out here and run this way and then there he is we got to readjust our whole entire accuracy what we're going to do here is we're going to come out we're going to go like that and then boom we could just easily drop him like that i didn't, I didn't even tell him to go there that was kind of cool that was, that, was, that was really nice timing i got them muted too so i don't know how that worked out but it worked now let's say someone's in this window again you're not going to rush out here and then look like that and then well we got so someone was there at that point but you, what you're going to do is you're going to come out here and you're going to have this kind of just going with you so if someone is in there you just ads and you shoot them right away like this boom 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 drop 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 easy as that all right 
it's pretty simple and it just kind of goes for anything and you don't have to do it slow you don't have to sit there and go as slow as i'm showing you guys like that what you want to do is you kind of want to make it fast just go like that and then boom you could drop i didn't mean to get knifed i asked him nicely before i started this to not not kill me but they do what they do right yeah, yeah, don't even try it again. Don't even, honestly, don't even try it again. So yeah, you just kind of want to go like that, turn here, be able to shoot someone right away. Pretty simple stuff, right? And it's just, it's it just works out in your favor a lot more. And uh, yeah, right there, boom. See, my crosshair is always where I expect a person to be. I'm never going to not have it where I expect someone to be. And it just works out in your favor. Another thing is you want to use head glitches, guys. I'm not even kidding. Here's one right here. This game is literally filled with head glitches okay so it's just it's meant for you to play like a little rat and that's what it is there's a head glitch right here as well so you can watch that door but right here you're kind of open i wouldn't really recommend this head glitch much at least not for watching the door i would recommend it for watching here and this way you're covered on the right and you're watching this area right here and it's just overall and just everything is here in the game for a reason you're not going to see something that's in the game for no reason whatsoever everything has a reason Everything's in a place for a reason. And here's this rock right here, again, to hold a heady. There's this little thing right here, which could help you hold a heady. Not the best one, because you're really open here, but holding head glitches really works. Because what a head glitch does is it makes it very hard for the enemy to actually see you. Like, let's say there was someone there, I'd see their whole entire body like that. Like that person's body right there. I saw the whole thing. The only thing they could see on me, at least standing that far, would probably be the top of my forehead. They wouldn't even see my gun. Even though my gun is clearly sticking out and I'm able to shoot them, there's no way they would actually see my gun. So I always tell people, use head glitches. People say, oh, that's super ratty. Why do you play like that and stuff? Guys, it's in the game. Everything's here for a reason. I'm gonna let him kill me. I wanna show you guys this right now. Just look at how hard it is to actually spot me. Now he's using a sniper, so it's probably gonna be a little easier. But look at that, he only saw my eyeballs. He didn't see anything lower than that. I would have been a very hard target to hit, although he's a very good sniper. He's really good at it. So we don't have to worry about anything like that. But in game, you're gonna be very hard to be spotted there. And if someone's using an AR, just for them to actually stick on you and kill you and stuff, it's it's going to be very, very hard for them to do so. So always use head glitches, always use little areas. Like I sit in here, for example, when I'm capping the flag or the hard point or something. And the reason for that is because, again, I'm, I'm a very hard target to hit, not easy to see. You just want to use all those things to your advantage, and it's going to help you guys out a lot easier. Now, he's getting smart. He's starting to realize that I am staying in the same area. So what I also like to do, as you guys saw right there, is kind of just change areas. You don't want to stay in the same spot too long because then people get smart so if i was sitting here for like a few kills he started to know he started throwing grenades at me I'm not asking him to do this he just knows it's just it's basic logic right so what you want to do is you want to kill someone and then kind of rotate over to another area on the map get a few kills there rotate again to another area of the map now maps like stash house they're small it, it's all hectic it's all random it's not always gonna work out in your favor there's just gonna be people everywhere spawning literally everywhere as well so it's not always gonna work out in your favor or anything but Overall, especially on the larger maps, actually turning and going around to different areas will definitely work out in your favor. I'm just going to beat him a sec because why the heck not? Someone's going to come out this door. At least if I was playing multiplayer, that's where I would look. There you go again. Easy, simple as that. We're going to break through here. I noticed they haven't been coming inside, so you just got to notice all those kinds of things as well. I had to, I had to. 